thank you, everyone. Um, I just realized something um, just before the film started. It was five years ago last, next week, next week, it was August 18th, 2018, that Barbara started filming. And um, some of the scenes, you saw some of those scenes exactly five years ago. Um, Barbara, you were going yes, to speak Patty. before this film started. And we just had to get the film on screen. So what did you want to say about this journey, this five-year journey, and the beautiful product that came out of it? Well, it was different because now they've seen the film. <laughs> so <laughs> they know. But I really wanted to talk about um, Mark and Janet and their constant fight for equality um, and for American justice and starting uh, Save Our Sons, going into prisons and Janet's work with Rose Escobar. Uh, and I was sure there was not going to be a dry eye in the theater. But most of all, what blew me away, and I've been a filmmaker for quite a while, um, and to see these people being able to get calls from the president and the vice president and asking their advice. I had never seen anything like that before. And they're so incredible, both of you. You're both so humble. Thank you. But, yeah, you have so much power. And that was something that I'd never seen and it was so beautiful and how much appreciation President Biden has for you and how honored I am to have been able to work with you for so long. Thank you. Bravo. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. We it really, you. It really has been an honor to uh, produce this film and this is something I've never asked you, Mark and Janet, and I want you guys, you go to, to go first, and I'm going to ask Barbara the same question. What did you think in August of 2018? Um, what did you think we were getting into, and what surprised you? You know, in August, first of all, thank you all very much for coming, and yeah. thank you. Thanks to uh, uh, the Martha's, Martha's Vineyard African American Film Fest. Let's give them a round of applause for yeah. continuing to bring and to, uh, to Barbara and Patty and Nina, who's not here, Rhonda, and also to Janet, I want to just say thank you so much for this incredible collaboration. You see, I'm the only, I'm the only dude in the, in, you know, so I'm, I'm in an honored status. I, in 2018, hell was happening. Was it right after Charlottesville? Right about it was that. exactly a year after Charlottesville. And this country, we were uh, in the midst of Trumpism. We were in the midst of this uh, rise in white supremacy. Uh, we, were, we were being battered every day. And, and, and my sense was that the work of many generations to, to bend the moral arc uh, towards justice, that there was an active effort to undo it. That's what I felt when we began this. And I didn't know where this journey uh, was gonna go. Barbara's an incredible filmmaker. She is incredible, but you know, she also is a little bit of a riddler, right? Uh, because she, uh, to some extent, I said, where are we going with this? She said, be patient. <laughs> You'll see, uh, be patient. I've gotta kinda see you all in action because this, uh, this project was a project where we were followed around. Uh, and the whole thing she said is don't be conscious of the camera, just be spontaneous, be yourself. Mm -hmm. That's what we want to capture, authenticity. This was not acting, this was real. And you know, of 50 or so hours of shooting, Barbara condensed it into a two hour uh, masterpiece. And uh, there could have been so much more to this in terms of what we were doing. But it also, you know, what was exciting to me is we wanted to showcase how we work together. We wanted to showcase this notion of coalition building 
uh, between the black and Latino communities, which is essential to the future of the country. Uh, we've got to think about how we build you know, an American future, and we're going to do it by having strong communities. And I'm committed to a strong, uh, resilient, uh, forceful black community, but I'm committed to building coalitions uh, to build a multicultural democracy uh, in the future of this nation. And so we wanted to showcase that because when we looked around, there were no video projects, there were no, no books, no very little done that showcased it. Instead, we have a, you know, a mainstream media narrative trying to create division and friction and competition. And we felt like, hey, we need people to see that beyond that narrative, there is something different and real and authentic happening. And so, you know, when we started in 2018, that's kind of what I wanted to show, but we didn't know where this battle and struggle, and it was a battle and a struggle against Trumpism. So Janet, what about you? What were you, what were you envisioning? Well, again, thank you all for coming and for being part of this incredible film festival. and and. I want to thank uh, Barbara for putting this together in such a beautiful way, but also, as you can see, I'm inspired by Mark's leadership, his sense of inclusion, partnership, understanding the importance of coalition building, which I think, you know, we really only scratched the surface in the film, but I think it's important to take that peek into what happens behind the scenes. At the time, we didn't understand exactly how this was all gonna to come together, but I think what is of value here is for the audiences to see that the hard work that doesn't make it in front of the headlines, the hard work of just every day trying to build a coalition that's gonna to seek to create positive change. And Mark's absolutely right. The fact that there hasn't been a film project that has focused on African-American and the Latino community leaders trying to find our way during one of the most challenging times that we have probably faced in our country in modern civil rights history. So for us to be able to capture that and to recognize that I think we're only scratching the surface of what that potential can be to bring our communities closer together and marching toward that vision of an inclusive multiracial democracy that we know will make our country stronger. So I, I'm just uh, really feel blessed to have been chosen to be part of this. And, and the fact is though, Mark and I have worked closely together at the national level. We wanna set an example for others that we can come together despite people trying to divide us despite forces literally trying to create that wedge between us. And we wanna make sure that we can build that effort and alignment on to the local, to the state, to the regional levels, because there is power in the ability to achieve that positive change. Yeah, so you just talked yourself into take two. You ready for me for another five years? <laughs> We're ready, we're ready. And, uh, that is, that's, that's funny, that's. Barbara, Barbara was, you know, I they said. Might, I they said, might say yes. Barbara was cagey and, but you know, we were also on a journey. We started, we not, we did not know. And can I make. George Floyd would occur. We did well, not have any sense about what we saw with Rose Escobar. I mean, this was a, a work uh, in progress. I mean, we were. And, and you get an opportunity to see that, uh, as Janet has said, I work behind the scenes, but also I will work in having to respond time and time again to the challenges that face this nation. Uh, we, our work it cannot always be scripted, cannot always be planned, can always, cannot always be neat and strategic. Uh, we have to be responsive because that's what the people we serve want. So this was supposed to be a two-year shoot, and what we found when George Floyd was murdered and when the Black Lives Matter movement began and grew and through January 6th, we had a 
legendary two-time Oscar-winning documentary filmmaker on the ground with Mark and Janet. And we just said, we ran out of money. We said, keep shooting. Yes, we did. We ran out of money. We were begging the friends and family and companies. Um, Charlene Denizard from PepsiCo is sitting here in the front row. Thank, Thank you, you, Charlene. Charlene. Thank you. PepsiCo. Thank you. The PepsiCo Foundation has been a huge, huge supporter of, of this film. And um, so, okay, five years later, here we sit. What do you want out of this now? I'll just say, we, and Janet has really framed this, we want to set an example for leadership at the state, local, and national level. We want to demonstrate the value proposition of coalition building. Uh, we want, uh, my, my hope would be that we could expose this to young emerging leaders. To, uh, you know, one of the great moments we had was you saw a glimpse of the conversation with the young men at St. Augustine High School in New Orleans and you just saw a glimpse of that conversation because I sat there with those young men and and, and their, their insight and their passion and their true understanding uh, just uh, kind of knocked us over. But I want all high schoolers across the nation, college students across the nation, to be able to be exposed to this with the hope that it'll inspire, encourage them to think about principled leadership, coalition building, uh, and never being afraid. And I think also, too, that this film, for me, doesn't want anybody to sit on the sidelines anymore, to get out there and to do something, even if it's as simple as just voting, but to be out there and to be part of it and to help to make change, because we need it in so many different places. Yeah, I think exposing, though, too, that, you know, it's ideal to think that we can come together, but it's not easy. I mean, it, it's important for us to actually do that and to take steps that will actually change the course of our, of our country by voting and understanding how important that is. But it's messy when you're in the work and as important as it is for us to come together there's a lot of obstacles that can be thrown in our way, both respectively as we are in our own communities, but when we try to bring our communities together, it, it can be challenging. So for us, I think it's really important for us to commit to making sure that we won't let those barriers deter us. We won't let those folks who want to divide us succeed and really find that common ground because we know there is much more that unites us than divides us, but we have to be realistic and understand that there are forces at play that want to keep us apart. And I wanted to, you know, spotlight reentry work, uh, spotlight the work we do at the National Urban League. You saw an incredible program in St. Louis, and thanks to the St. Louis Urban League and Michael McMillan, their leader, and Jamie Dennis and. Look, you saw when we invested in these young men, most of them made it. But we also had to point out that someone did not make it. But what we wanted to show is also the challenges that they face. But when you care and when you love and when you invest and when you lift, you can make a difference uh, in people's lives. And for me, uh, you saw the house I grew up in. If I drew a circle of three to five blocks around the house I grew up in, I would have everything from the great actor Wendell Pierce to doctors and lawyers and pastors. But you know what else I'd have? Two to three people on death row in Angola. I'd have... Uh, several people whose lives have been wrecked and racked by drugs, all in the same neighborhood, and all in the same, uh, within blocks of each other, sometimes in the same family. 
And so we wanted to showcase that work. And one of my hopes is that it'll inspire people that investing in reentry, but also investing in those things that keep people from that pathway make sense, pay dividends, and are worth it. Yeah. Mark, can I, what's can the, I, can, can I just want to add a point too? I think it's really important um, from a Latino community perspective, I, I don't know if folks recognize this, but our community is changing. Yes, we're a large demographic and we continue to grow and we're impacting the future course of the country, but we're changing within our own community. And a, a, a data point that's worth mentioning is that 25% of our community today identify as Afro-Latino. We don't just empathize with the black community, we identify with the black community. And I think it's, it's important for folks to understand that there's a lot of reasons we ought to be working together, but that change is real. And I think there's gonna be more of that that should bring us together. And we need these examples of leadership and our organizations working together because beyond immigration, at Unidos US, we work on education issues, health access voting. issues, voting issues, workforce issues, and uh, economic empowerment issues. So all of those beyond civil rights and voting rights are areas where we work together. And when we succeed in lifting up our communities, we're lifting up, as we move into the future, everyone. And that has got to be our goal. There's also, I heard an organization called No Labels, which I don't know if you know about yet, but it frightens me terribly because they're gonna be an independent party and they're gonna put up a third candidate, which will definitely take votes away from President Biden. Do you know anything about this organization? Yeah, I've heard about it and I think, I, I just agree, so let me just speak in my personal capacity. I'll yeah. take my Urban League hat off, right? That way I can talk politics. Uh, <laughs> like, well, you know, honestly, it is a diversionary tactic. Uh, and the reason why it's a diversionary tactic, and I wanna give people this historical note, and I'll go all the way back to 1968, so people understand how the course of history can be changed with very, very small moves. In 1968, you had a three-way race for president. You had Hubert Humphrey, Richard Nixon, and George Wallace. George Wallace's candidacy kept Hubert Humphrey out of the White House. He won just enough electoral votes and popular votes to tip the scales in a very close election to Richard Nixon. What was the result of that? Richard Nixon got three appointees to the United States Supreme Court. And in effect changed the Warren Court, which had been a very progressive court, into a much more conservative court. Hold that thought, 2000. 2000 comes around and there's a fella who I haven't heard from, who I had some respect for, by the name of Ralph Nader. Gore and Bush. Nader gets just enough votes in three or four states to tip the hanging chads, the swinging hanging chads, chads election to George Bush who didn't win the popular vote. Right. Then fast forward to 2016, there was a candidate in there who you haven't heard from, seen from since then by the name of Jill Stein. She got 3% of the vote. The Russian propaganda operation was saying to people in the black community, at the end, vote for Jill Stein, right? So the important point is to understand that sometimes these third party candidates are put in there simply for the purposes, they have no shot at winning. Zero shot, snowball's chance in hell of winning, yet they are put in there, you know, in order to create confusion and diversion. So I'm saying this in my individual capacity because I feel very strongly that elections are not 
just a, a contest between personalities. Elections are contests between agendas. I vote for people a lot that I'm not in love with. I'm not trying to be in love with somebody I'm voting for. I don't want to have lunch with them. I don't want to have dinner with them. I don't care if they're cute or sexy no. or appealing. I want to know what is your agenda. And if your agenda mostly aligns with mine, that's who we have to go with, right? We have to, de we have to demystify that this is not Hollywood. This is something called democracy. Anyway, that's my point. Mark, you're good. Now we, we know why you were elected mayor to, for two terms and went out, left, left office 20 years ago with very, very high approval ratings. So we have to wrap up. I would just like to add to Mark and Janet's points about wanting to get this into colleges, universities, high schools. Um, we, we are looking for support for uh, an education campaign. Anyone who wants to help us, you can figure out a way to, uh, to reach out to us. Um, this is really important. Um, this is a story of mor moral leadership, and you are wonderful role models for America. Thank you. Uh, Barbara, thank you for telling the story. Yes. And thank you all for coming today. We just really appreciate oh, yeah. and your time. We and we might support. add that we're expecting in the fall that we'll have distribution with Warner Brothers Discovery has bought Gumbo Coalition and it will be on Max, formerly known as HBO Max, before the end of the year. Late 2023, watch for it. Tell your friends, have watch parties. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you.